Okay, so I said that I would show you guys a Patrone's pattern from beginning to end. So first off, I have to go online and find the pattern that I want in the Patrone's app, and I'm gonna show that to you now. So first I open the Patrone's app on my iPad, and I scroll down to the issue I want, and there it is there. Click that open, click read, and then I'm able to look through the designs. So this is the top I wanna to do here. It's called Top Corto con Faldon, and I just think that's really sweet and adorable and doesn't use a ton of fabric, so I'm gonna click on that little curved arrow right next to it, which will automatically take me over to the instructions, and then I'll click on that arrow and it will open an external link that has the pattern. And you can see here the pattern is nine pages, which is really a reasonable amount. So I'm gonna open it in the app that works with my printer so that I can make sure to print it at the right size because that's really, really important. So I click on it and make sure that it's printing at the original size, that it's not fitting it to the page or doing anything like that, and then I print. Okay, so now we're all printed off, we're all ready to go. I find these patterns easier to put together than some of the other ones. And the reason why is that, first of all, there are only nine pages in most of them. And there's less, obviously there's less overlap of patterns, so that makes it a lot easier. But also, if you can see here, that it actually prints part of the pattern past the line where you're going to line it up. And so you have more of an idea. As well, at the top and the bottom, they have these little lines. You can see there's that little um, kind of check there and a little check there and one in the middle. So when you're lining it up, it's really, really clear. Okay, so what I do now is I cut off just one side. I put most of this together already, as you can see, but I'm just gonna show you one. So I cut off just one side so that I can then line up all of those marks. Okay, so when I'm lining it up, this is obviously three in a row, so it's a little, maybe a little more fiddly, but I'm, I can see here how the pattern continues. Can you see that? The pattern continues over. And so I'm just matching up so that I'm continuing that line, continuing that line all the way down. And it's great. Now I use white glue to do my, my patterns, and I do that for a few reasons. Number one, I find that glue sticks will crystallize and eventually break apart if you're keeping your patterns for a long time. If you're not keeping them for a long time, it's not as much of an issue. And sometimes it will tape them as well, but then you have problems where it'll flap around if you don't tape it on both sides. So I like this. This one's great if you can find it because it has, you can see here, oops, I got a little fabric stuck to that. You can see that it has this um, guide that will, as you're, as you're gluing, drag through the glue so that it's not all beaded kind of thing. So I'm gonna do that now. And sometimes you have to kind of smoosh it back and forth and so that you're there and your markings match a little more. And yeah, there you go. Okay, first a mini checklist right before you start tracing your pattern. Number one, write down or verify how many pattern pieces are in your pattern. It has happened to me before that I have missed a pattern piece and I've ended up really messing with my project. So count how many pieces and check them off as you go. Sometimes I even just check them off in the magazine. Number two, for each pattern piece, you want to look at a few things. Number one, is it cut on the fold? So I've noticed that in European pattern magazines, they don't always do that thing that we are used to in North America. And even I think British patterns where there's sort of like that that line like this with two arrows and that shows that that is cut on the fold. In Patrones, it's shown by a dotted line and uh, I can show you what that looks like. And so I know not to add seam allowances to that side of the pattern because clearly it's cut on the fold. Um, also, you wanna notice how many markings are on that pattern. So I look at the pattern and I go, okay, there are three markings on this pattern before I even start. So that once I trace it, I look and I go, okay, have I found three markings? And I will often lift up and put down the the patron, uh, parchment paper as I go to make sure that I'm not missing any markings, directional lines, things like that. 
Okay, so as well as adding your seam allowance, you wanna be aware which patterns are a hem. So a sleeve or the hem of a dress or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to add a larger seam allowance. And again, that's left up to you. So for this top, I'm gonna to do two centimeters on my sleeve because I don't really wanna have a big bulky hem. But for a dress, I might add three, four or five centimeters. It just depends on what I want. So be aware that you're not just adding a centimeter or whatever your preferred seam allowance is around the edge of the whole pattern piece. You have to look at each piece and decide which seam allowances it needs. And then lastly, I mark each pattern piece, if I'm being good, <laughs> with what pattern it is. So I'll write Patrones 409, style 21, and then I'll give myself a colloquial you know, term for what it is. So I wrote square neck top, so that if I'm just pulling something out, I'm not gonna know off the top of my head what Patrones 409 number 21 is. So I'll, I'll write, you know, uh, knit top or pleated skirt or whatever it is to kind of remind myself of what pattern that is. Now, if I'm just making something up and I'm probably not gonna keep hold on to the pattern, maybe I won't bother doing that, but best practice is to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I translate all my patterns. Do not be scared, it is really easy. So the first thing I do when I open the app is click camera, and then I'm going to wanna to use the scan option. So you see scan at the bottom, you click scan, and then you click the round button as if you are taking a picture and it will find everything. Click select all, and then click the blue arrow at the top that will then take you to the full translation and you can see it there in English at the bottom and then if you double click on that it will automatically copy it and then I can go over and I can move it to my notes and I can add all of those notes and then I add some notes when I read in and I realize that there's something not correct like the word polish actually means finish the word manga actually means sleeve and that's how I do my translation Okay, so I've cut all of my pattern pieces. Um, I do not have enough left to do the belt for the other dress that I was hoping to get out of it, but that's fine. Um, this, this top is gonna be very cute and it's very well done. So everything is like lined with nice facings and everything like that. And so it takes a little bit more fabric than maybe I initially intended, but I still got it out of less than a meter. Okay, so I've, the other thing I've done is I have printed off my instructions so that I can not just keep looking at my phone small and everything like that. And I've been reading through, and as I read through, I realized that there was another um, line, not lining piece, um, uh, facing piece that I had forgotten to cut out. So that's why it's really important to read everything first. And I'll show you on the pattern. It's for this piece here, which is one of the front pieces. And you can see here, there's a line across, and it says right there, Vista Pieza Dos. So, Vista means facing and piece two, which is this here, piece two. So when you see that, that means that this top portion is also the pattern piece for the facing. So after I cut the full front pieces, I also cut this off and did two separate facing pieces. That was the same for this one here. So you can see here, this line here, and it says right on it, Vista Pieza Uno. So yeah. So there you have um, the facing piece for that. So that's a good thing to look for. And I think I told you before too that um, when something is cut on the fold, it has a dashed line right here. And it says on it, uh, centro de ta, te tras doble. So it says center back doubled, doubled meaning uh, on the fold and uh, on the straight of grain. So, and that's for piece five. And they all have their numbers on them and they all have the marking and yeah. So now that I'm done that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to start sewing. All right, so I used the instructions as written and I finished my top. So here she is. This is model 21 from issue 409. And I really love how it turned out. So I'll put in some pictures and video if I have it of how it looks. 
Um, yeah, this turned out really, really well. And gosh, this Atelier Brunette viscose is dreamy. Um, I will definitely be getting more of it. The only thing about it is it does fray quite a lot so just be aware of that but in terms of how it feels and drapes on the body it's absolutely beautiful um, a couple of fun details that i wanted to show you is although the inside is faced um, there the back neckline is just using bias tape so that's kind of great because it definitely keeps it from flipping out when the facing is included in this shoulder seam and you're only having a back bias tape so that's something that i will use definitely in the future because i find when it's all the way around is when it flips out but if you just have the bias tape at the back you then automatically have your facing included within these seams so has not flipped out at all um i like that this peplum here is double layered so it's fully lined so it hangs really nicely it's got a good weight to it um i love the princess detailing here the sweetheart neckline i think i was calling it a square neck top before but it is sweetheart of course the fluttery sleeves and then the really nice darts at the back actually give it a gathered effect when you're wearing it. So I'm really happy with this. I'm happy that I got, I think I ended up ordering two meters, might've been two and a half meters of the Atelier Brunette Viscose. I invested in it last fall from Nunoya. I did get a discount, a professional discount, but I did buy it. Um, and I got a dress, which you will see very soon and a blouse out of that um, two and a half euros. So I'm, or two and a half meters. So two and a half euros, I wish, <laughs> um, two and a half meters. So I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Let me know below if you will be trying a foreign language pattern. Maybe it's Patrones. Remember that Patrones is an app on the app store. So you just have to go and look for it and you can download it for free. You can buy separate issues. You can buy a full subscription and there is a free example. It'll say, um, ejemplo, I think it says ejemplo gratuito or something like that, which is, free issue so you can pick out one of those and make a free pattern from that and give all of these techniques I, I showed you a try um, so let me know if you are inspired to maybe give that a try and if there's anything else that you've seen that you'd like me to make and show you how to do please do let me know below all right guys that's all for me today the sun really is shining and I'm dying to get out there so I hope that wherever you are the sun is shining and you are sewing and I will talk to you soon bye bye